I've been sitting here listening to one better speaker after another, and I hope that you're as roused as I am to fight these, uh, not only these trap laws. I was sitting there thinking, it's 2011. It is hard to imagine just this last week. Just this last week, the United States House of Representatives, that esteemed body, voted for a let her die bill. Let her die. Do you know what this bill said? All but two Republicans voted for it, by the way. Do you know what this bill said? It said that if you were hemorrhaging from a miscarriage or that you'd had a tubal, ligation, a tubal eruption uh, from an ectopic pregnancy and you were hemorrhaging, the hospital bear no responsibility either to treat you or to send you to another hospital that would treat you. They had no, this is, they call this abortion? No. How can they even sleep at night? But then I listened to what Rose read. And the, the Department of Health and Ken Cuccinelli, they said this would not have an impact here in Virginia on the family or the stability of the family. Well, what about women and girls? What kind of family would there be without the mother, the daughter, the sister, the niece, the nephew? The... Also, as I rode here, and we stopped at Starbucks, which are, of course, everywhere. It took us a little time to find one. We saw the headlines of the New York Times. Finally, a bishop has been indicted, a Roman Catholic bishop has been indicted for not reporting a priest child abuser. And it is about time, decade after decade of child abuse, Decade, millions and millions and hundreds of millions, in fact, billions and billions of dollars in, in settlements they've had to pay, of, of, the money of hard-working Catholics to shield pedophile, pedophilia priests. Yes. And where is the outrage about the morals of the hierarchy of the Roman Catholic Church? Could you imagine if that was the National Organization for Women? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. No. And it isn't just here in the United States. Such charges are in Germany, Italy, Ireland, Australia, Africa, South America, the world. Because they have a problem. As they, as they wage a war on women, and the reason I'm speaking about them is we can't let the state or the church, not the state nor the church, interfere with the lives and well-being of women and girls of this world. Not the church, not, not the church, not the state. Women and girls will decide their fate. Not the church, not the state. Women and girls will decide their fate. We are in the midst of an economic crisis in this country and in this world. And when these politicians ran for office in 2008 and 2010, they said they were going to deal with the economic crisis. They were going to put it at the top. Since the election of 2010 in the United States Congress, day after day, they've dealt with the issue of abortion. The more we talk about jobs, the more they pass bills to prohibit the access not only to abortion, but birth control. The Congress of the United States voted this year, or was it last, they all fold together, but since 2010, to cut all, all, 100% of family planning funds out of the federal budget. That's birth control.
control and contraception for a poor woman. And right now, a monthly uh, set of pills for birth control goes at full price something like $65 to $70 a month. That's without, in some of these prescriptions, you need to go to an uh, OBGYN twice and sometimes once a year. In the regular city or big city, it costs we're at over $200 to have that exam. $1,000 easy for birth control. And yet they are cutting off access. They would if they had the power to cut off access fully to birth control at lower prices. Vote them out. Vote them out. And fortunately, at this moment, we have a Senate that would block them and we have a president that would block them. We must make sure that that block stays. And as they do that, they try to cut off international family planning aid to the third world. And we don't have to say that in the past women died because of these oppressive laws. Everywhere abortion is illegal and birth control is hard to get, women die unnecessarily. Over 70,000 every year from botch illegal abortions in the third world. 500,000, and who knows the exact numbers, it's hundreds of thousands of women, young girls as well as women, die because they don't have access to birth control and they are dying unnecessarily of maternal illnesses that go untreated. we got to be outraged. Yes. And as we stand here, I was mentioning the national, let's go right to the state, Virginia isn't alone. Mississippi has an initiative on the November ballot of 2011 that will give full legal life protection to fertilize eggs. Yeah. Oh. That will interfere with birth control, it will make it illegal. The IUD, the pills, the um, Plan B, fertility treatments. What are they going to do? Start investigating women who have miscarriages? Is that going to be called unintentional, what would you call it, involuntary manslaughter because you have a miscarriage? 40, 40, 40 percent of pregnancies happen to have a miscarriage. What are these people thinking? Crazy. They, they are thinking only of one thing, to get elected and to take more power. As they say, they want to shrink the size of the government to the size of a bathtub. That they want to eliminate Medicaid and Medicare and Social Security. As they want to eliminate social services to people, they want to control their very personal lives. We must stop this blitzkrieg through the states attacking women's rights in Pennsylvania. And I just came from there. This is not just the South. They are also right now uh, debating a clinic access, uh, make it like a, a, a hospital regulations. It's in their house. Um, it's in, we, we've had eight states banning or reducing family planning. New Jersey Senator, that moderate governor, Chris Christie, by his own pen, wiped out all family planning in the state of New Jersey, all family planning funding. Mm. It's in state after state. Uh, in Texas, they cut it back 57%. Uh, it doesn't matter the state. We're looking at Florida may amend their constitution to not allow the right to privacy for women's choice on abortion or birth control. We must stand our ground, and we must stand our ground right here in Virginia. This law, this law's only intent is to close family planning clinics and those clinics that provide low-cost birth control. 
They're after birth control, abortion, and now cancer screening, the whole, the whole program. And so what will we do? First, we have to drown, flood uh, the governor with emails saying we won't stand for this. We must know that we're into a big and long fight. This won't be easy. You know, I've been fighting this, literally. It's terrible to admit how many decades. But long before it was legal, we, I was involved in the Pennsylvania Abortion Justice Association to make it legal. I thought that when we discovered the birth control pill, there would never be a question anymore on the availability of family planning. But here we are. And remember, the price of liberty is constant vigilance. We have to be prepared to fight for how long it takes. We must turn this around. This is a state to stop the Equal Rights Amendment. This is a state that's trying to make abortion and birth control inaccessible. There's only one way to take back. We must take back the state legislature. We must take back the governor. And we must be prepared to fight for as long as it takes. The feminist majority's headquarters is in Virginia. We are going to stay as long as it takes. Nobody in this country is safe as long as Virginia and Mississippi and Pennsylvania and Florida and Indiana is, is waging a war on women. And we cannot have one of the two political parties thinking that they can capture the country by beating up on women and little girls. It's enough. In Pennsylvania, we started, the, the Pennsylvania folks started a slogan, We've had enough. I say in Virginia, we have had enough. We have had enough. We have had enough. Keep your laws off of girls' bodies and boys' bodies and men's bodies and women's bodies. We are adults. And make sure that health care is accessible to all Americans. It's our birthright. And we have a right to the Affordable Care Act, which also provides birth control. Remember, under the Affordable Care Act, a birth control will be available with no co-pays. Don't despair. They're trying to roll the clock back. Women aren't going back. Girls are going back. The feminist majority took on the Taliban when nobody else will. And we will 